There has been a lot of money available for sprint car teams in 2023 so far, and with more big cash coming next week at Knoxville, we'll look today at earnings to date for the top 154 10 drivers and compare them to 2022. Let's go. It's Friday, August 4th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. I've been asked a few times lately if Dirt Tracker merch will be available at any big events coming up. Uh, and unfortunately, the answer is no. I'm still waiting on all of those millions to start rolling in so I can get a big time merch trailer. Uh, in the meantime, no, that's why I've made shipping free for orders of $20 or more at shop.dirttracker.com. Can't get it at the track, but you can get a shirt or stickers or koozies or whatever else I have in the store uh, and have them sent right to you in just a few days. I do have the last few late model shirts in stock right now on the site, just 10 bucks. Uh, I'm down to three of the Sprint Car stickers, uh, but there are plenty of the two logo shirts ready to go like the uh, one I'm wearing currently. Uh, you can get some cool stuff, show your support uh, by buying anytime over at shop.dirttracker.com. Uh, we are just days away at this point from the 62nd Knoxville Nationals with things getting rolling next Wednesday night. The 360 Nationals are going on now through Saturday. The Outlaw teams are at Peebley for the Ironman 55, but the focus starts to shift on Sunday with the Capitani Classic. Uh, those uh, four days next week are incredibly lucrative for the sprint car teams. Knoxville pays the winner $185,000 to win from a total purse of nearly $1.2 million. This year, it will pay $15,000 to just start the main event. With all that money still to come and some big paydays already handed out this year, I wanted to dive into the season earnings so far for 410 Sprint Car Racing. We did something similar back in May when the year was about a quarter of the way complete. Uh, there continues to be more and more cash pumped into the system for the drivers and the teams, and the big one this year was obviously the Eldora Million. Uh, between the two days of the Million and the two days of King's Royal, Eldora paid out $2 million total. We also saw a $750,000 total purse from the High Bank Nationals at Husets, and that's on top of the seven completed high limit races uh, and some pumped up purses at a lot of outlaw shows. Looking at the numbers, thanks to Bill over at SprintCarRatings.com, the obvious leader in the clubhouse right now is Logan Schuhart. He tops all drivers with $1.173 million in earnings for the year. Obviously, winning the Eldora Million has certainly helped that. Uh, barring an insane run from somebody like David Gravel, that likely is not to be topped this season. Gravel is second right now at 536000 with Carson Macedo, Rico Abreu, and Donnie Schatz completing the top five in season earnings. Looking at the top 150 drivers, they've completed 4,451 races so far in 2023, with just shy $9 million earned between them. The full group is averaging right at $2,000 a night. If we compare that to all of 2022, the top 150 earned $11.2 million during 6,624 races and averaged about $1,700 a night. So last year, 11.2. So far this year is actually 8.9. Last year, uh, they averaged about $1,700 a night. This year, we're averaging about $2,000 a night. So you can see those differences between uh, you know, some of the pumped up purses, high limit, all the things that have happened this year versus last year. Uh, with the, the money set to be earned over the next week, this year's total will be right around that $10 million mark uh, just coming up in this next week. Uh, during last season, Brent Marks was the highest earner in all of 410 sprint car racing, and he averaged $7,700 per race. But at this moment, we actually have three guys north, uh, north of $10,000 a night on average. They are Logan Schuhart, Gravel, and Kyle Larson. Larson has only made 17 410 starts this year, but has earned $234,000 thanks to seven victories. He's averaging nearly $14,000 a race. That's only bettered by Shoehart for obvious reasons. Gravel is sitting at nearly $11,000 per night with his, uh, his numbers being boosted by the $250,000 Husits win. Donnie Schatz uh, has uh, $298,000 in earnings right now. That was obviously helped out a lot by the uh, Kings Royal win, 175K there. Without that money, he'd be outside the top 15 in earnings right now and averaging right around the same money per night as guys like Freddie Raymer, Brian Brown, and Trey Starks. I think he'll still be a favorite for the win next Saturday, and, uh, Saturday night, and uh, a repeat of 2022 would push him into the top three. 
One driver who has taken a big leap this season is Rico Abreu. That's obviously not a surprise with all of the success we've seen. He already has eight wins and 43 starts and over 300,000 in earnings. In 2022, he averaged about $2,800 per race, but this year it's over $7,000 per race. That's pretty damn nice. Other guys who have taken big steps and average winnings per night include Justin Sanders, obviously the big Skagit win, Carson Macedo, and Corey Day. Guys who have gone the other direction, the wrong direction with earnings this season include Sheldon Huddenshield, Lance DeWeese, Jacob Allen, and Brent Marks. Marks' 2022 numbers were obviously helped by taking $276,000 out of Eldora uh, during July. Uh, looking at all of this too, you can just see how one big win can change a season and really alter the perceptions and really alter those dollar figures. One more macro number for you from the list. In 2022, we had 28 drivers crack $100,000 in winnings for the year, and right now we already have 21. Corey Eliason and Corey Day will join that list literally in a matter of days, like Eliason could join it tonight. Uh, and guys like Aaron Reitzel, Parker Price Miller, Lance DeWeese, Jacob Allen, all shouldn't have a problem getting there either. So we're, I would say we're probably going to get to at least 28, if not maybe a couple of more, depending on how some guys do here down the stretch. Uh, if you want to see a lot of this for yourself, make sure to check out SprintCarRatings.com. Bill does a really nice job over there tracking all sorts of numbers and stats. And I've said this before, I don't know how that guy sleeps. All right, let's talk about some racing from last night and what to check out uh, coming up this weekend. At Cedar Lake, Bobby Pierce stayed hot. He led all 25 laps of the first USA Nationals prelim feature. It was Pierce's third win in five races and his fifth straight top two finish with the Outlaws. His championship lead is now triple digits over Chris Madden heading into Friday night. Brandon Shepard, Ricky Thornton Jr. joined him on the podium. Tonight is the same setup, uh, same thing, full program, uh, you know, prelim feature, everybody included, outlaw points on the line. Uh, and then tomorrow night is the big show. At Knoxville, Aaron Reitzel started his march towards defending uh, his 360 Nationals crown from a year ago by winning the first prelim night. He went fourth to the victory uh, and topped Sam Hafer Heap Jr. and Scott Boguski. Pole sitter Kobe Copeland led 14 laps before settling for fifth. I was going to say something today about how impressive it was for Boguski to go 15th to third last night and how he probably deserves more opportunities than he's gotten. But just a little bit ago, he was DQ'd from the event for illegal modifications to his engine's cylinder heads that were discovered after the tech process last night. He was 11th in event points, uh, now gives that up in all of the winnings. So, so much for that. Uh, some surprises last night included Blake Hahn, Ayrton Jeniton, and J.J. Hickel missing the night's feature. Rico Abreu finished 18th after needing a B-Main transfer, and I think Tony Rost had the night's Tough Luck Award. He earned a feature transfer in his heat, but his engine blew up before he could get off the racetrack after the heat race. Then, in the rush to bolt in a fresh piece, he didn't have to, uh, time to add tear-offs to his helmet, so he ran the entire feature struggling to see with no tear-offs. Uh, 57 cars are entered tonight, including Darren Pittman, Anthony Macri, PPM, Casey Kane, Brian Brown, Zeb Wise, Justin Sanders, Brady Bacon, and plenty more. Uh, you can see uh, how this event has become uh, pretty tough this year. Uh, tomorrow night's main event pays $20,000 to the winner. At Peevely, the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars begin two nights of racing with the Extreme Midget Series for the Ironman 55 weekend. Gravel lead sweep by eight points right now in the championship. Macedo trails by 48. Saturday's 55 lapper pays $20,000 to the winner, and this will be the last championship shuffling we'll see for the Outlaws until after the Nationals. Knoxville is show up points only for series full-timers, so you won't see any changes in the Outlaw Championship. Recent winners at the Federated Auto Parts Raceway at I-55 include Brad Sweet earlier this year. He also won the Ironman a year ago. Uh, Macedo and Hoddenshield also have recent wins at Peebley as well, going back to 2021. After Saturday night, then it's all about Knoxville here. Uh, elsewhere this weekend, there is plenty of local racing to check out, plus USMTS Modifieds. Uh, we talked about their weekend yesterday. There's the Ironman and Comp Cam's Late Models in action, uh, and there is the $35,000 uh, to win wood tick at Merritt on Saturday. Kyle Busch is racing uh, at that one. Uh, in between his NASCAR commitments at MIS, he'll drive a late model owned by Brandon Thurlby. Uh, that's it for the daily this week. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you don't do so already. Also, don't forget to check out the streaming schedule at dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. Hope you guys have a good weekend out there. We'll see you right back here on Monday.